What's up video creators? This video is all about iMovie. Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a tutorial and review on Apple's iMovie software. So iMovie has a couple different versions, the desktop version and the phone version. This video is going to focus on the desktop version. So iMovie is the popular video editing software made by the Apple company. So iMovie actually comes standard in all Apple products, all Apple Mac computers, the iPhone or iPad. The iPhone version and the desktop version are completely separate entities. They are not cloud based. That means if you're making a video on iMovie in your iPhone and you're doing one on your desktop, they're totally separate. They don't connect through the cloud. I'll do another video on the iPhone version of iMovie. So why use iMovie? iMovie is a great basic intro level movie software to get your feet wet, to learn the ropes, to start making some videos, play around with the different features, transitions, different title options. If you're more advanced in video making, iMovie probably has some limitations. All right, so this video is gonna be a tutorial and go over all the basics that you need to know for iMovie. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so this is the iMovie main menu. So it's very simple. You have two tabs here. So the first tab is your projects tabs. This is where all of your saved uh, works are gonna be held. This is where your videos, your trailers, all of that good stuff's gonna show up when you start making some videos. So let's click on the media tab. The media tab is basically your storage of all of your videos, all of your audio and your pictures. Anything that you use from previous projects is gonna show up in your library. You can add or delete these um, folders if you want. So let's go back out to the main menu. So when you hit this big plus sign, you're going to have two options. You have your movie option and your trailer option. This video is going to focus on the movie option and we can do the trailer another day. So there's three main components to your main user face of creating a movie. The top left is your media area. Um, over here you have your playback and you have filters and cropping options and down here is your timeline the timeline is where all the magic is going to happen this is where you're going to drag in your videos your pictures your audio you're going to splice everything so let's take a deeper look into the media area so over here like i said before this is going to be your library where you have all saved uh, photos or pictures or videos that you've used from previous projects and you can delete these if you don't want them your current project that you're working on all of the media is going to come up here and you can change the title of this if you want the audio tab is where you can upload music from your iTunes or GarageBand what's weird about iMovie on the desktop is it actually only has seven songs that you can choose from um, but the iMovie on the phone you can actually choose from quite a bit more that's an interesting feature that's something I don't like about iMovie on the desktop the next tab is your titles so it has more title options than the iMovie uh, software on the phone so you can play around with different titles and different features and you can sample them by just dragging the cursor across the screen and you can see how it's going to play out but basically the titles are intro and they're sort of subtitle if you need something on the bottom or end credits it doesn't really have information that you can put in to the middle of your video like content so I wish they had more options of in video text on iMovie that's one thing I wish they did have but they have some pretty cool features you can see here you know they have the Star Wars theme you know, so you can play around with that, add some more creativity to your videos. Backgrounds, another thing that's very simple here on iMovie, and I'm not sure why, um, it doesn't have too many backgrounds. Other movie softwares have more backgrounds, they have more titles and uh, more audio for sure. So that's one drawback from using iMovie, but it's a good place to start. So anyways, if you want to do some travel videos, you have quite a few different globe things, history videos. Um, you have curtains. Some of these move and have visual effects. Others are just kind of blank with colors. You can drag your backgrounds down here and you can put text and titles over them. The last tab is transitions. Another way to add visual special effects to make your videos more engaging. So you want to play around with all different transitions and I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so we're going to get started making a movie. So when you want to import your media, you simply click import and you can basically access anything on your desktop so we'll import audio and video and 
see what happens. So it shows up in my project media. This is, again, the current media shows up here. If I wanted to access an older clip, you know, something from here, I can do that. But this is the current media. When I want to start a video, I simply drag the image or the audio or the picture down into the timeline. So now I've started my video and you can see here the time. So it's five minutes and 41 seconds on this clip. One quick note, the quality of your videos is dependent upon the first visual that you drag into the timeline. So if you want to figure out what quality your video is set at, you come over here to settings. And as you can see here, it's 1080p. So if I want it 4K, I'd have to delete this. I'd have to find a video that's 4K and drag that in. So let's see if that changes the quality. So as you can see here, it changed the quality. This is a little trick. So make sure you pay attention to this if that's something you're concerned about, the quality. So now I can upload this video on 4K setting rather than for uh, 1080p or another visual quality. So again, the first video or image has to be a high quality for iMovie to be able to upload into the high quality So as you can see, these clips are five minutes and 47 seconds in length, but it's very, they're very small. If I want to magnify them, I come over to this cursor over here, right here, and I drag to the right, and that will zoom in to the videos so I can splice them a little bit more precise. That's a key step to splicing accurately, is to zoom in. If I want to zoom out, I simply go to the left. If I want to zoom in all the way, I go to the right. I usually like to work in the middle. All right, so the way the timeline works, basically the middle is where your main visuals are gonna go. The bottom area of the timeline is audio and you can drag in another layer of audio as well. So if you have talking on this audio, you can add light music at the bottom here. Um, at the top, you can add visual over visual. So let's do that. So I dragged in another visual on top of a visual. So what's going to happen if I drag my cursor across, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a cutaway. So the settings, you come up here to this box right here, the video overlay settings, and you have a couple different options. It's set on cutaway. I just showed you that. If you record it in a green screen background, you can put the green screen setting on and then the top layer would be you in front of the green screen and the background would be here if you put it on the green screen setting. But you have to record in a green screen in order for that to work. Split screen is another option for visual on visual. As you can see, it looks like that. You also have the option of picture in picture. And you can make this bigger if you choose. So if you're doing a gaming video and you wanna, or a reaction video and you wanna do two screens this is your your guy right here and if you want to delete anything you highlight it make sure that the particular box you want to delete is highlighted in yellow you hit delete and it's gone same with this now if i delete a visual this audio will also delete so keep that in mind if you don't want the audio to delete you got to drag it so that this little attachment is attached to something you're not deleting so if i just simply hit delete that's what it looks like my intro here and then I have a silent video here there's no audio the audio shows up at the bottom where the blue is so as you can see here this clip has audio this does not so if I want to drag in the audio I do this now as you can see here there's no volume on this audio so I can splice it when it is highlighted in yellow that means I can clip it so I right click split clip and I can delete that first part and I can drag this over so that now I have audio that goes to this video. So the audio shows up in two spots, down here if a clip has it or at the bottom. If you ever make a mistake, you can go to edit, undo, and it comes back. So if you make a mistake um, in the last couple edits, you can undo that, you can back out of it. So keep that in mind as well. And let's add a title to this. Um, so you, you can sample the titles, let's drag it down. You can stretch out the titles if you want to make the title a little longer or the text a little longer. Just got to hold and drag. There we 
we go. Now let's let's do the playback. So that's what it would look like. If I want to add a background, so let's add a background over here. And I want to move my title to the beginning. I can drag it and this is what it would look like. You can adjust the brightness. So now it's black and white or very vibrant. So you can do the color settings. You can speed up your frames. So if you want to do a slow-mo feature or speed something up, you can do that. Background noise equalizers. This is important. So if you have sort of heavy background noise on it, so like let's say you have a copyrighted song in the background of a video, this is going to be where you adjust the volume a little bit more. Your regular volume is here. So if I don't want any volume on the clip, I can hit the mute right here or put the 0%. If I want a little bit, I can you know adjust it as I need to, all the way up to 400%. So that's important with the video clips. So these two are color features. This is cropping. This is stabilizer. So if you want to play around with this, you can do some cool different features. See how it's got that special effect with the stabilizer. So you play around with it. Basically, it's trial and error. You have to actually you know, click on things and just mess around with iMovie a little bit. Lots of different features to make your videos pop a little bit. So let's say I want to add some music to this intro. Right now, there's no song or music to this beginning part. I go to my audio. Let's sample some of these. All right, so we'll add that. Drag it down. And we'll test it out over here. So there you go. All right, so just keep in mind that the top layer is going to be the main visual. The bottom is gonna be the background. You always wanna test as you go by moving the cursor across the image, and that's how it's gonna look. If you wanna adjust the settings, you come up here, and you hit this main menu right here. And these are your options. All right, so splicing a video is very simple. You click, highlight the area that you wanna cut or splice. Make sure it's highlighted in yellow. You right click and you have some different options here. You can delete, you can also hit backspace. Um, you can split the clip. This is how you splice. So as you can see, I've split it. So if I wanna delete this section, it's gone. If I wanna delete another section, boom, split clip, gone. And you can see the times getting less. So the freeze frame option is another cool feature that iMovie offers and most other video software editors offer allows a video to sort of stop mid video and kind of zoom in as if it's a picture and then it continues to move at the end it's a pretty cool feature so let's take a look at how it looks see how it zooms in as if it were a picture so that's a cool feature you can also enable this picture to move in Ken Burns style. So you can play around with the features up here. Come up to the crop here and you can adjust how it looks. If you don't want the picture to move, you hit fit. If you want it to move, you do the Ken Burns. So as you can see the start, if you want to drag it out and if you want it to zoom in, you can do something like that. Let's take a look at how it looks. So Ken Burns style just means that the video is moving. You also have that feature in the iMovie app version on the phone. The thing you can do with video that has audio to it, you can come down here and you can sort of transition the audio a little bit so it doesn't go from one loud noise to another. It kind of blends together by fading out. So you can fade the audio here and it kind of comes in quiet and then gets normal volume and then goes down quiet onto the next clip. So that's another cool feature if you want to keep the audio attached to a video. As stated before, if you want to mute this clip, you come up here, boom, boom, and it's muted. So there's no sound now, as you can see down here. Remember, the top is the video, the bottom of the clip is any audio that's attached to it.
If you want to move clips around in the timeline, you can do that. You click, make sure it's highlighted. And you simply drag. And you have to give it a second, but you can place the clips wherever you want. All right, let's play around with the transitions. All right, so this is how the clip looks without a transition. Let's add. You can also adjust the length of the transitions by double clicking. So it's set on one second default. Make it 1.5.5. You can apply it to this transition in particular or to all of the transitions that you put in on the video. Let's apply it to this one. Now let's see how it looks. See, it just adds another level of special effect. Let's play around with some other ones. Fade to black. Let's take a look at the swap one. So there's a couple different cool features to play around with just to give your video some extra added special effects. When you wanna save your iMovie, there is no file save. You simply back out of your projects, name it, hit OK, and it will save to your projects tab on the main menu of iMovie. So if you want to adjust the name, you just simply click here. You can adjust the name. All right, your options for the movie are here. So you can play the movie, open it. You can share it. So if you want to share it to YouTube or to iTunes or email it to someone, these are a couple options. If you want to save it to your computer, you hit file. When you want to save it, it gives you options on how you are going to save it. So when you save this to your desktop, you can change the resolution, the quality, and the speed. Keep in mind, the higher the quality of the video and the longer it is, the more space it's going to take up into your computer or your phone. So if you want the highest quality, you're not going to be able to upload or download as many movies. You're going to have to delete and create space. So as you can see here, if it's on 4K, it's 97.6 megabytes. If you go to 1080p, it drops down to 67. If I go up to the highest quality, it goes to 1.96 gigabytes. So keep that in mind when you're trying to save things or share to YouTube. You can delete here if you choose to delete your project. That's how you would delete it. So all in all, iMovie is a great starting point for any video creator. It comes with all the main features that one would need. And if you have an Apple product, it's already on your devices. The desktop version has more features than the iPad or the iPhone version. However, it is limited if you're an advanced editor. A couple drawbacks from the desktop version it doesn't have as much music as the iPhone version or other video software. It doesn't have any stock photos or stock videos that you can use. It doesn't have as many backgrounds or different creative templates as other video software creators. But overall, it does the job. It gives you all the tools you need to make good videos and be successful. I hope you found this video informative. Do me one last favor. Make sure you hit the big thumbs up for us and make sure you turn that red subscribe button gray. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.